Hi there, I'm Brian Hayward uh, from Hayward Guitars in Winchester. I started the business uh, back in 2000, I opened the shop. I've been building and repairing guitars since I was 20. I come from a carpentry background. When I was 20 something, I was kind of the best guitarist in the world, so therefore I needed the best guitar in the world. Uh, so I went to see this guy to have one built and basically he gave me a crash course, sent me off to build my own guitar, which I duly did. Uh, then I built a guitar for a friend and then a friend's friend and so on and so forth. Um, worked in carpentry for years, injured me back, as indeed all carpenters do, uh, and then decided to give it a go um, in guitar building, uh, repairing and retail. So this shop came up, lovely shop it is, um, in 2000. Um, so that's where it all started. Uh, right, here we are then, in the shop. Welcome to my shop where I spend most of my life. No, pretty much all of my life. Um, so yeah, here's the counter. This is uh, the till over here. As you can see, 11.57, still not turned on. <laughs> Welcome to retail, people. Yes, it's great. Uh, I've done oh, numerous strange jobs. Um, one guy bought a, a short scale bass in, which he bought by mistake as he wanted a long scale bass. Therefore, he needed the neck to be two or three inches longer. Rather than buy the, the, the thing he wanted, um, he decided it would be a better idea to get me to adjust the, the short scale bass. So I had to increase the neck length by about two or three inches, which was an interesting job, a bit of a pain, but we got there in the end. Back in a day, um, I was also building an awful lot of um, solid body electrics. Um, this fella came in last week because um, the, the old tremolo system had rotted away on it, so it's having a new Floyd Rose trem system fitted, um, new knobs and bits and bobs and a full service. So it's quite nice to see some of my old work come back in. Uh, most of my work now consists of servicing setups I'll get work coming in from, um, oh, well, all over the south coast, uh, Andover, Basingstoke, all that area. Um, I'll get a lot of work coming down from London, uh, and all the local guys obviously bring their, their um, very broken instruments in to be serviced and set up. Yeah, going back a few years, I, I, Frank Turner used to, used to shop in here. I've done a few repairs for him. I think he's bought a couple of guitars in here. Uh, this was way back before he was um, mega famous as he is now. His mum also used to shop in here, Mrs. Turner. She bought some harmonicas for him, and I believe a banjo for a Christmas present. Lovely lady, and Frank's lovely as well. Sorry, Frank. Uh, not seen him for ages. Yeah, I had uh, Jet Harris from The Shadows in uh, one day. Shabby looking bloke with, with ill-fitting trousers. Um, but he used to come in pretty regularly, buy strings. And of course, the old friend Jackie Levin. Um, sadly, not with us anymore. Um, but I've done an awful lot of work for Jackie, um, rebuilt, repaired his guitars after every tour. Um, yeah, lovely guy. Okay, so um, going back, going back some years, um, when I was in the my financial doldrums, um, my accountant told me to get rid of all the guitars to pay off my various bank debts, and the business could survive. So I was merely selling guitars and not replacing them. And um, an old friend of mine, uh, an old customer. Richard popped in and he suggested that he would buy the guitar stock um, and then we'd do a, a profit split on the sales. So it means that I've got a shop full of guitars which are provided by HG Music um, with a profit share scheme so I just get a commission of sale which is great. Uh, as time kind of went on I realised and my accountant told me so there's very little money to be made in building guitars. Um, Again, as time goes on, I've got more of a reputation for, for repairs, customising, servicing. So most of my work now is along that line. So doing strange repairs, unusual customising, general servicing, rebuilding guitars that have been crushed or thrown out of windows or whatever. So 18 years, uh, building, repairing, servicing, customising every guitar and strange instrument ever until the door opens and the next strange instrument comes in. Well, where do you start? <laughs> I've got work in progress. 
Um, I've also got oh miles of half-built projects. So so what I, I really enjoy is, is building acoustic guitars. Um, but it's finding time to, to actually get round to building them. The trouble with building a guitar from scratch is it takes an awful lot of time, an awful lot of materials. And with the repair side of the business, it's generally work that needs to be done very quick. I.e. I've got a gig tomorrow and my guitar's in five pieces, can you fix it? So that's the kind of work that needs to be done quite quickly. And also that's where the money is. Uh, what I said earlier, cash flow keeps the business running. Uh, I very rarely get you get a you know a day off where I haven't got an awful lot on. So there's a constant amount of service and repairing setting up to do, um, which leaves me really little time to do the interesting stuff, which is the custom build work. So that kind of has taken a bit of a backseat, as um, it doesn't pay the wages. And as glamorous as this job looks, covered in dust, dirt, and oil all day long. Um, I've still got to pay, pay my wages, etc. General stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, it's an old mandolin that's been there forever. You can see by the amount of cobwebs around it. It's, it's unrepairable, but it's, it's just been sort of hanging there. Um, somewhere for the spiders to live. Uh, it gets quite lonely in here sometimes, so, you know, arachnids are nice to talk to. But generally speaking, I've got band saws and I've got, I've got chop saws, uh, I've got electric fret saws, um, pretty much all the tools I need for, for uh, everything. Yeah, running your own business, uh, it's, it's, it's hard work. It's a seven day, day a week job. Um, you've got to keep your eye on everything. Um, and you've really, really, really got to check you've got enough money in the bank to keep you afloat. Uh, and then there's my office, which is uh, full of sound equipment and uh, tripods and stuff at the moment. And more guitar bodies and more works in progress. So you've really got to do jobs that brings money in so you can pay the rent, pay the mortgage, pay all the bills, buy beer, all that kind of thing. Um, so the actual building side um, has kind of taken a back seat. Again, years ago when I actually started the business, I had three or four people working for me, I had two shops. Um, so that meant I could spend an awful lot of time in the workshop getting on with custom builds um, as well as the repairs. But uh, unfortunately, now it's just me. Um, I have very little time to actually get on with the building. However, I, I think the, the best advice I was given um, by a, a business consultant when I started up um, 18 years ago was all the problems going to come from cash flow and staff and he was absolutely right cash flow is always a problem staff are a bigger problem i found out the other problem is probably customers as well they can be a bit you know but um i've got a very good uh, local customer base and they've been very supportive and so thanks guys everybody who shops in here so so when i when i started the business um i thought hey what have i got to lose i ain't got anything um, so, so what can you lose? You can lose all your money, you can lose your, your house and your, your marriage. Anyway, I lost all of that, <laughs> um, which, which really come down to, to the VAT man, to be honest with you. Um, I couldn't really make enough money to put my VAT aside when I was VAT registered, so I just raked up a massive um, VAT bill. Um, it got to the point where I was, I was just going to take the the shop keys and my house keys into the bank and just say, look, go on, have the lot, I'm off. I'm gonna do something else. But um, anyway, after the, the loss of the house money and wife, uh, I kind of got the business back together, um, you know, worked hard and, and, and built it back up to, to what it is now, which is a glorious thing. Um, so yes, I'm, um, I'm still skint, but not as skint. And oh look, here's me. 1988. I just finished building a double neck bass. Is that one of your first? No, this is quite later on. I've done quite a lot prior to that. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of electrics really. Um, but this is the first bass I've built, I think. So that's a fret, fretted and fretless bass. I had hair then, long flowing locks. Um, 
But, but yeah, really, if you're starting your own business, it's a great thing to do. Um, you don't get much time off, you don't get much money out of it, but it's great doing something you're passionate about and you love. Uh, also, I think um, there's really too few independents around. So I think if you are passionate about um, whatever it is you're doing, jewellery, um, music, whatever, uh, you should kind of give it a go. Um, and if you can just make ends meet out of it, then that's a, that's a great thing and you get an awful lot back out of it. It's just so nice doing something you're passionate about.